Hey gang, it's Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I've got Benjamin Almarac here with me from Parlement de Parfum. We're going to talk to you about the brand, so if you're curious to discover it, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I'm going to turn it over to Benjamin and he's going to answer questions for us. We started the brand two years and a half ago uh, with the opening of uh, this uh, store. Um, so yes, yeah, September 2016. We had uh, eight fragrances at the beginning after we've added in 2017 uh, two new scents. So going up to 10 and now we are arriving uh, on 12 including the new uh, launches called the Papyrus Oud and uh, Gardens of India. Um, and the idea of the brand was like, um, well, first I, I needed to, to, to make something of my life because I, I went out of school, uh, just finished my school actually, uh, and we've always had this idea with my brother and my father uh, to create a place for us, uh, to show like our philosophy uh, to show the perfume of my father, just to make like our family place. Uh, and of course with several like uh, ideas, the first one was to set uh, a lab uh, in the store, a real lab, so as you can see right there, you've got like only uh, real ingredients. Um, and that's quite interesting because uh, now there's a big topic around like chemicals or natural, and it's interesting to explain that Naturals are great, but chemicals are mandatory. Uh, and uh, if you check a little bit, uh, like François Coty a century ago, uh, already used some uh, synthetics. Uh, if you take like the big, uh, the big, uh, the big success of the past few years, uh, it was thanks to thanks to synthetics. For example, if you take like Fahrenheit, my father created, you had a synthetic that no longer exists. So that's why the formula has changed several times. But in the original one from 88, from Michel, uh, you had a synthetic. If you take like Chalimar, it was not possible to make Chalimar without uh, an ingredient called um, ethyl vanillin, which is of course like a, a, a synthetic vanilla. Uh, so this was the first idea to set a lab uh, in the streets. Um, the second idea was to say, okay, um, let's make a brand where you only choose a scent and not an overall package. In the package, I mean, of course, packaging. I mean, uh, of course, like luxury branding advertisement. So everything is made, um, everything is supposed to suit you just for the scent. So you smell it and you choose a scent. You don't choose the name. You don't choose the feeling it's supposed to give. You don't choose the packaging. You choose the scent that gives you emotions. That's only this. Um, we receive a lot of people every day uh, asking, okay, which one is your best seller? Uh, and unfortunately, we have to say, okay, there is no best seller because if you choose the best seller, then you don't choose by yourself. You just choose what the mainstream likes. With this concept, the idea, for example, is to, if you check, for example, at this place, which is really like the meeting point of clients and us, uh, this place is the place where we make them smell and we make them smell just on, on bloaters. We just dip the bloater, we give it to them. First, it's useful because we don't spray a lot in the store, so the scent is quite pure, even if everything, of course, has been like uh, uh, as deep in the perfume since two years and a half, but then they can really feel the scent. And after, they just smell like a perfume and they just choose a perfume. And they will say, okay, so this one is too sweet, or this one is too floral, and I prefer a bit more like woody. So we go on this side and we smell another one, and we say, okay, this is like the woody one, so this is like the fresh one. Uh, and on this object, you can smell like um, the middle of base note because we dip it every morning at 11. So depending on the hour they just visit us, they can smell the perfume like four hours, five hours, six hours, up to eight hours after. So that's was the philosophy and also about the packaging, so just about the bottle, what you have inside. We put our money inside with the ingredients and not outside. And overall, we tell the truth. So if people ask, is there synthetics? We say yes. Um, do you use, like for example, a real vanilla? Uh, we say no. Uh, do you use, like uh, I don't know, like a real uh, amber? 
I, I replied, okay, what is amber? Is it ambre gris or is it like the amber filling with benzoin, vanilla, a bit smoky, oriental? Uh, if it's ambre gris, no, we don't use it because there is not enough to supply uh, production of ambre gris. Uh, do you use rose from grass? I reply, no. Uh, in grass, I was born in grass, so I, I know quite well the, the, the place and I still spend my every days there. Uh, you got a few fields and these fields are not enough to supply the production of their owner, it means Chanel or Dior. So of course, no, we don't use the rose from grass. We use the rose from Turkey, which is actually one of the best ones. Uh, and all the ingredients are coming from Roberté. So Roberté is famous for being one of the best, and even I think the best uh, raw uh, materials uh, supplier. So we work with them because my father is still working for them. That's the overall idea, so the truth, and only the perfume and not what you have uh, besides. So who is your father? You keep mentioning your father. Uh, my audience probably doesn't know who they are, but tell us a little bit about your father. Well, well, my father, uh, well, uh, he's called like Michel Almerac. He was born in Grasse in uh, 53, uh, so it was quite obvious he, he, will, <laughs> he will become a perfumer. He's from the same generation as, uh, for example, François de Machy of, uh, of Dior or uh, or oh, um, uh, the guy of uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, just... Uh, Jacques Cavalier. Jacques Cavalier, well, three, absolutely, I just forgot the name. So they're all from the same generation. And he, 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 he decided to become a perfumer because it was like, uh, at that time, in 53, in grass, uh, well, it was not like the same industry as now. It was still like very uh, artisanal, etc. Uh, so he studied uh, in 71 and during the school of uh, Jean Amic uh, in the factory called uh, Rue Bertrand Dupont. Uh, you can see actually uh, on this photo at the back, at the bottom of the picture, you have like the, the, the photo of Rue Bertrand Dupont at that time. Um, and after he started to create, create and create and his first Good successes uh, arrived in the late uh, 80s. Uh, he created the original Fahrenheit uh, from Dior, so in 1988, the real one. So the one you cannot smell anymore, unfortunately, because some ingredients are now forbidden and others are just disappeared. Uh, he created Gucci Rush in 98. He created uh, Gucci Pour Homme in 2003. He created uh, uh, for example, the Voleur de Rose of Artisan Parfumeur in 93. He created, uh, I don't know, like uh, Armani Privé, Bois d'Ensemble. He created The Chloe uh, in 2007, the real one. He created also a little bit for like Le Labo. He made the Ambrette, so the very musky and delicate one. He created Colonia Essenza from Aqua di Parma. Uh, and he created, after <laughs> either if we like it or not, he created like half of the collection of Bon number no. 9, including the scent of peace for her, for him, and some others that I don't even remember the name. Uh, and he went in now to create for himself because he was, when we launched the brand, he was 63. And he said, okay, I love some formulas that I have in my portfolio, but I don't know how to launch it because maybe with the rest of years um, I still have to work in this industry, I will not have the opportunity to launch these fragrances. So here was the opportunity to say, okay, here we have perfumers perfume. So made by a perfumer with nobody else asking for modifications, uh, asking uh, to suit, to fit like a, a brief, to suit a brief, to suit like a, a market a review, etc. So he just does whatever he wants to do and launch like the formulas he likes. And uh, as you already know, like the one we just launched uh, right now called Papyrus Hood is of course a revival of the discontinued Gucci Pour Homme, uh, almost the same. Uh, just of course turn twisted with like more modern ingredients and more modern way of creating, but that's still the same idea at the beginning. So can we talk a little bit about your fragrances in your collection with the notes that are back here? Yeah, with pleasure. So um, here on this floor, on this shelf, um, I can show you like the main ingredients of the 10 first fragrances. It means that it's missing the papyrus oud and the gardens of India. Uh, let's check, for example, the, the first one, which is called uh, une tonne de rose, so a ton of roses. 
interesting because some people used to call my father Mr. Rose, uh, even if he don't, if he doesn't consider himself as Mr. Rose because he likes rose, as he likes sandalwood or jasmine, for example. But whatever, um, I think because of Chloe maybe. So here the rose, we show the three main ingredients. Uh, of course, the first one, which is interesting to see, is the rose. First, so this one is called rose damascena essence. Uh, so essence means uh, essential oil uh, and Damascena means the one from let's say Damas in Syria of course it's not the best place in the world right now to produce roses so this one is coming from Turkey uh, it's the essential oil why um, in perfume you can use essential oil or absolutes coming from natural ingredients two different way of extracting the ingredients and uh, inside the rose, you got an ingredient called alcohol uh, phenylethylic. Oh, I guess phenylethylic alcohol in English. Um, this is what smells really the rose. Okay, alcohol phenylethylic is the, the, the heart of the rose scent. Uh, of course, you also have like geraniol, which is very important. But in the essential oil, you get the phenylethylic alcohol. In the absolute, you don't extract it. So you extract another material that doesn't include the phenylethylic alcohol. So that's why for our rose perfume, as we wanted it to smell the rose, we needed to use the essential oil, which includes phenylethylic alcohol. After you got like um, an ingredient called the patchouli fraction. What does it mean fraction? Fraction is quite a modern way of extracting the ingredients. Um, it's nice because a lot of people feel like uncomfortable with uh, patchouli. Reminds them like patchouli of I don't know like uh, a hippie style uh, in the 70s uh, Woodstock or uh, May 69 in France, which was like the let's say the young revolution. Um, they don't they don't like the Renaissance one. Some people love it, other hates it because it's too strong. The patchouli fraction fraction is how to say more delicate. It's fresher, clearer, more like let's imagine you got like the the ingredients and just take the heart of the ingredients. You remove all like the dirty part of the patchouli. Last thing is about like the frambinone. Frambinone is a synthetic uh, that recreates the scent of raspberry black currants. So that's why our rose, it's a woody rose with patchouli and a bit fruity, quite gourmand, not sweet, but quite gourmand, comfortable with this raspberry and, and, uh, and black currant ingredients. Uh, good to know that a lot of time we never use uh, we use only a few times the ingredients coming from the fruits. Why? Because when you extract the fruits, you extract the sugar, and when you have sugar, you cannot mix it in alcohol. So that's quite complicated to use fruits in perfumery. Of course, this is like, like this is just like the overall idea, but it's good to know like the overall idea tends to never use the fruits. So here is the one we just uh, we just spoke about, like the uh, in tonne de rose. Um, in ton, because a ton, because to get one kilogram of essential oil, you need actually 3.5 tons of uh, petals. So it's a lot. Well, in ton de rose sounds better than 3.5 tons of roses, but that's the idea. After we can discuss a little bit about, let's say, the spring scent as we are entering spring. It's called totally white. Uh, totally white means like very pure, very delicate, only about white flowers. Uh, it's more like a, a representation of white flowers because a lot of these white flowers they are mute. So unfortunately, that's another reason why we use chemicals because some flowers it's not possible to extract it. Uh, lily of the valley, lilac, it's not possible. Syringa, it's not possible. Uh, of course, we all know that iris flower is not possible, but we can extract the roots. Um, uh, violet, it's not possible to extract the flower, but we, we can extract the leaves, but the leaves smells totally different. So our totally white is a representation of white flowers. Um, good to compare with the previous perfume, which was called Tonne de Rose. I explained to you the, the, the difference between essential oil of rose and absolute of rose with the phenylethylic alcohol. Here we got the absolute of rose, which doesn't contain the phenylethylic alcohol. So you got something that is, let's say, less rosy, more floral, more clean, almost a bit musky and green. That's why in Totally White, we don't want it to smell too much the rose, so we use the absolute of rose. 
Um, after you got something that is also quite famous, it's a synthetic called Edion, uh, HC for uh, high uh, concentration. Uh, this ingredient is famous for um, Eau Sauvage by Christian Dior. Uh, the Eau Sauvage used to contain a lot of this, even if you don't think that it smells like white flowers in the Eau Sauvage by Christian Dior, you have a lot of Edion, uh, maybe not GH, the high concentration, I don't know, but the Edion you have it. And the last one, which gives like this feeling of spring, of a morning, morning of spring, is like called the anisic aldehyde. So it smells a little bit like anise, licorice. It's a little bit like medicine, uh, almost like hospital. So nobody wants to smell like an hospital, but this ingredient can remind you this feeling. And you have it a lot in the totally white, which gives a perfume that is quite. Um, quite long-lasting but still very delicate, uh, really like the scent of spring. Let's check um, another one, which is called uh, Milky Musk. Mm, so my tester is empty. Um, Milky Musk, uh, it's here. And again, three main ingredients. Of course, Milky Musk is based on sandalwood and uh, musk. The sandalwood here is very unusual. Why? Uh, because sandalwood was originally from India. Uh, it's called uh, album, the album sandalwood. And I'm quite sure India now has just stopped all the exportation since a long time. Some people say they can still use it, why not? But with Roberté, it's not possible. <coughs> um, after, you have a lot of sandalwood that has been <coughs> produced in Australia. But it's not the same, it's not the album sandalwood, it's the spicatum. Spicatum is different, it's still very good, but just different. And it's not the one we wanted to have inside this one. This one is again the album one, but not from India, just from New Caledonia. Which is normally used only for like a very famous brand, French brand. A huge one, very classic, very luxury, but we can still use it, thanks to Roberté. Um, <coughs> this is it, the sandalwood HE for uh, essential oil. After you have like the musk. Here the musk is, is an ingredient called uh, ambre tolide. Um, ambre tolide, you can recognize like the, the word ambre and maybe more like ambre seeds. The thing we collect, um, I don't want to mistake, I will say like uh, South America, and I don't remember exactly which country. It's small bells, that's why you call it like ambre seeds, very small bells, and inside they got a powder that is musky. And the ombre tolid recreates this feeling of the musk from the ombre seeds. So it's a musk that is not stronger than another musk, but just different. And the last thing is about like the, the fig milk feeling that you can have inside the scent. It's uh, called methyl leton. It gives you this feeling of something very creamy, very milky, that plays with the sandalwood, which is already very milky. Uh, that's it. So this is like the the three ingredients of the of the, the milky musk and let's just like uh, speak about the last ingredient of a perfume called uh, woody perfecto so woody perfecto is actually this one while all the bottles are the same just the name changes and inside woody perfecto there is a very funny ingredient it's uh, an accord of vetiver from 80 of something maybe like coffee coffee mocha a bit chocolatey uh, and you have a gum and this gum uh, is called uh, Elemi. Elemi is from the Philippines and Elemi is interesting because it smells, it's at the center of lemon, citrus, uh, pink peppercorn, so it's a bit peppery but delicate, and incense. Uh, really like in between these three and it's very useful because with this ingredient you can have a citrus that will stay a bit longer than normal citrus ingredients that are supposed to fade away very quickly. So, well, uh, thanks everybody for spending some time with us and with me. Uh, I hope I was not so boring. Uh, and of course, like, try to visit us if one day you're in Paris. So you can also uh, see our perfume at Lucky Scent in the US. It's the only places where we are right now. Um, I'm quite sure they will be able, or at least we will be able in our store to explain you our philosophy of transparency. Uh, honesty, just telling the truth, even if the truth is not all the time good to hear. Here we say the truth uh, and we just want you to find a perfume that suits you, not the perfume that will work more about like your imagination, that will give you like, I don't know, like more power or things like this, no, no, no. Here is just about the scent, ingredients, uh, we speak about it and you like it or not. We hope we like it.
Thank you. See you. Thank you a lot. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video with Benjamin of Parlement de Parfum. If you are in uh, Paris, what, where is your store located? You have two stores, right? Yeah, absolutely. We got two stores. Uh, the first one is called uh, is the, uh, Rue de Sévigné uh, in uh, Le Marais. So a nice place to visit uh, small streets, uh, not like the big Paris. Mm -hmm. And after we have a new store where normally you'll be lucky to meet my mom. So it's a real family story in uh, Saint-Germain-des-Prés. So it's the sixth district of Paris. Uh, 22 Rue uh, du Four. So cool. Always welcome. So if you are in Paris, definitely go check out the fragrances in their stores. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.